Hi everyone, Claire Horner here for the Ice Resin Creative Team and I'm just here with a new video project for you today so I hope you enjoy. Bye! What you will need to add an LED light into resin is first of all you need an LED. I've got a few different ones here. And these will be able to be found from any good retailer. You'll be able to find everything you need in any good electrical supply store. Uh, you can put an on-off switch in, which is optional. And an on-off switch looks like this. Uh, batteries, obviously, different kinds. If you use this kind, you don't need one of these. If you use this kind you do need one of these um, then you need a plug with your wires on to attach your power to your LED I'll show you how that works um, put my batteries in Plus that. So if I plug my power in, so that's live now, so I'm not going to touch these ends, but uh, this one's a flashing one, and uh, let's see which way around that goes. And you can see the LED is flashing. So on these LEDs, the longer point is your red wire, which is the live wire. And the shorter point isn't your live wire. See, when I turn it around, it doesn't flash. Turn it back that way. So that's a flashing blue one. This one is also a flashing blue. That one is a white, and that one is a white. So I'm going to use a white one. If you want to put in the on off switch rather than unplugging it every time, you would attach your on off switch to your live wire which is the red one and you will cut it halfway down and attach one to the middle prong and one to either the bottom or the top not both so it's the middle one and either the bottom or the top and that is where you if you that if I attached my wire to that one the switch being there would be the on position and that would be the off position okay you need electrical tape and electrical tape oh I can Oh, but tested them both, that's fine. Um, electrical tape is for near the end. And I'm not going to be adding an on off switch this time, so I'll put it in my bag safe. And I'm going to be using this kind of battery. So I can put this And the next thing you need is solder and a soldering iron. So the first thing that I'm going to do is now I know that this works, I'm going to split these open a little bit. And I'm going to solder my wires on. So the longest wire is your live, the shortest wire 
is your earth not attached to the battery so I've got my soldering iron I'm using the walnut hollow soldering iron and I'm gonna pick up some solder and it will smoke right into the camera sorry oh it's quite hot I might need to turn it off and coat it there we go that's a good coating and I can't do this in the air I'm afraid so I'm gonna have to Knocked it off. Not the best at soldering like this. I'm much better at soldering metal. Okay, that's one. And carefully, your solder gets quite hot when you're touching it to your wire, so make sure you pull a bit off. And well ventilated room obviously is advised. Oh. Didn't wait long enough for that to cool down. Okay, give that a minute. So there we have two soldered on. Little focus on the wire. Now I want to plug that into the battery and double check that that works before I go on. And yes, it does. So that is simple soldering. I'm just going to probably fast forward now because I'm going to turn the soldering iron off. You should always have your soldering iron off when you are not using it. The next part is to take some electrical tape and I now need to cover this and this separately. They've got to be kept separate. I've chosen the white tape because it will, if you use blue tape or yellow tape, it will shine through your project. If you're using a blue light, then that's obviously fine, but white is just easier to go with. So I'm gonna take a small bit, that's a bit too big. And I'm gonna put that right up there. And wrap that. this is what I do to begin and another small bit and again right up to the top if you have your piece turned on and these two wires the metal touches metal it will blow your bulb and the last thing you want in a resin project is a blown bulb because you can't just change your bulb as you will see next so cut them bits off and wrap it all the way down And once you've got that safely wrapped, you're ready to go on to the next step. Sorry, keep losing focus. Okay. 
and I am happy with that. I need it to be quite close together for my actual project. So now I'm just going to carefully bend them back together and you can see light through it so it's not touching but I'm just going to tape it there like that. Now I've got these little corner bits here I'm just going to chamfer them off So that's now safe. And when I touch it to battery, it all works with lights and works fine. I wouldn't use more than this AA batteries. If you use a too strong of a battery, you will just blow your LED. If you don't use a strong enough battery, your LED won't light up. And this is the perfect amount. Uh, I'm not sure what the USA um, electrical equivalent is, but these are just standard AA batteries. They're the, the industry standard in you know toys, that kind of thing. So for the second part of the project, I'm going to need my self-gripping tweezers, my LED now attached. I always check it and attach it first because there is a slight chance that you could blow the LED as you're putting as you're soldering on the wire. I've got some washi tape. I've got my ice resin, my mold, which I've already done a first pour because it takes quite obviously this is a huge mold it takes quite a lot I've got my stirring stick and my mixing cup marked up from ice resin and I've got the iced enamels in shattered opal because I am adding them in to the mix this is my favorite part look at that So you always start off with part A and I'm going to need quite a lot because there's still quite a big cavern in there. So that big air bubble you can see travelling up, I like to get that out of the way. Makes it easier to squeeze in part A. So I'm taking part A and I should have protective gloves on but because apparently I'm uh, stupid I've run out so I do recommend to wear latex gloves so I'm going to fill this to the 3 dram line with part A takes a minute probably fast forward through okay that is looking almost spot on to me for the 3 dram line And to mix ice resin, you always start with A and then go on to B. And it is equal parts, one to one ratio. So now I need to top this up exactly to the six gram line. And this one comes out much quicker than part A. So just remember that when you're putting it and giving it a good squeeze. And you do need to be exact with your mixing. I think I'm pretty much there. I always like to check when I've done my mixing. And I let A settle back down. And then I compare them. And if you can see... Part A and Part B is at the same level, which means that I've got my mix right. So I'll put that to one side and I'm going to carefully, I'm not whipping it 
I am not mixing like a blender. I don't want to whip air bubbles in, but I'm just carefully mixing that together. You will get some air bubbles and it does have a natural release mechanism in it. So the air bubbles will pop on their own. I like to hold it in my hand like this and it gets the heat from my hand into the resin which I find helps the mixing process. So I'll be back in a minute once this is mixed and ready to go. So you don't want to see me mixing for two minutes that straight, which is what the manufacturer recommends. Mixing tips that I can give you is to make sure that you wipe and scrape all around the edge and wipe it all off your stick to make sure that every little bit of both parts is raised up and in the mix and I really like these clear mixing cups because if you hold it up to the light you can see through it and you can see if there's any striations of where your mix hasn't mixed. Now that's got a few air bubbles in which is fine you'll be able to see them raising to the surface and popping of their own accord not worried about that at all Sometimes giving it a little tap helps them raise and helps them pop. So I leave that alone now for a couple of minutes. And do make sure you do this when you've not got any animals present, obviously. So I've let that sit and quite a lot of the big bubbles have already come to the surface and burst. So now what I'm going to do is take my iced enamel shattered opal and I'm going to add some into the mix. And I want a good dollop in there. The more you put in, the stronger it will be. So now what I want to do is just gently push them in and then give that a nice stir. Make sure they're all off my stick and in the mix. I always add in my particles, anything that I'm putting in my mix last because you need to be able to make sure that you can see that your mix is actually mixed properly and if you've got something reflecting in there like that you can't see if it's mixed properly or not. So just give them a quick one through and that looks pretty beautiful to me. Created a couple more bubbles when I did that so I'm just gonna tidy up while they pop. Okay the next part of the operation is to put the resin into the mold which is really simple I'm just gonna squeeze and pour. Nice and slowly, make sure I don't trap any bubbles in it and I'm going directly in the middle as you can see. And I think I've measured that one. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So the next part is I need to balance my LED where I need it to be. So what I'm going to do first is tape this bit to the side carefully. Because if I leave this bit flapping it's too heavy and it will pull out. So taking my stick I'm going to just going to tape the pieces in place. And around to make sure they don't pop up. 
perfect. Now I'm putting the LED in so the wires don't actually go in. But the top of the LED does. Doesn't matter if the wire goes in a little bit because you've got the tape on, so it's no big issue. And washi tape just comes off resin. So if you get any washi tape on your resin, don't be worried. And some extra tape on for good luck. Okay, I'm going to take my camera down and show you um, So you can see the point of the pair of scissors Here is the cable going in and here you can just see the top of it is the top of the LED, just in the top of the resin. So I need to put that somewhere safe to set and I will show you the finished project on the ice resin blog. So head over to iceresin.com and you will be able to see the finished project. Thanks for watching. Bye.